Hey everybody, we've got another heart today. This is number 649 in our collection and the heart would have sat roughly in the chest like this. You see that the lungs and the airway are still attached to this specimen. But the heart would have sat roughly in the chest like this with the anterior surface coming out towards the, the screen, posterior surface towards the turntable, head or superior here, legs or inferior here, left over here, and right over here. And we'll start off as we usually do, which is by trying to identify at least externally what appears to be the morphologic right atrial appendage. And here we find an atrial appendage that appears to be triangular, broad-based, or pyramidal. And so we'll go ahead and open the heart here. And we immediately find that there are pectinate muscles that spill outside the confines of the appendage, consistent with a morphologic right atrium. And then we also see the oval fossa, which is right here, and can see that there's a large atrial septal defect within the confines of the oval fossa. So there is an oval fossa atrial septal defect. We also do see the superior caval vein here draining into the roof of the right atrium. And just to demonstrate where that drains, here you can see the probe passing from the right atrium to the superior caval vein, and there is its mouth into the right atrium. The structures here get a little smaller, so I apologize if I cover any of the structures, but here by my thumb now is the mouth of the coronary sinus, so right here. Here is the tendon of Totoro. And remember, these two structures, the mouth of the coronary sinus and the tendon of Totoro, are two landmarks that form the triangle of cock. The other landmark then becomes the right-sided atrioventricular valve, and it is at the apex of this triangle, which would be roughly here, where we would expect the atrioventricular node or the AV node to sit. So now when we look at this right-sided atrioventricular junction, we see immediately that it is quite hypoplastic. Let me get this back into view, I'm so sorry. We see that there is a three leaflet one, two, three, atrioventricular valve here, and that this atrioventricular valve does have direct septal connections, consistent with the morphologic tricuspid valve, but clearly a very hypoplastic tricuspid valve. There is a morphologic right ventricle, although a very hypoplastic right ventricle. And in fact, this right ventricle appears to be bipartite with an inlet and a trabecular component, really no outlet component. And you can see that from where we'd expect the outlet to be, there is no egress from this right ventricle, so there does appear to be pulmonary atresia. There also is no ventricular septal defect, so this seems to be a heart with pulmonary atresia intact ventricular septum. Now externally here, we can see the pulmonary trunk, which appears to be of good size, and then the left and the right pulmonary arteries. And now if we probe back from the pulmonary trunk, once again, no entrance into the right ventricle. So consistent with pulmonary atresia and an intact ventricular septum. Let's see if we can actually look down on this pulmonary valve, which I think will be difficult. And here you can kind of see the, the pulmonary atresia, really no valve here. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at the posterior aspect of the heart. Here is another atrium, smooth walled, consistent with the morphologic left atrium. Here is the mouth of the left atrial appendage. And you can see here's the left atrial appendage and all the pectinate muscles are confined within the appendage itself. And then here from the left is that atrial septal defect that we've already seen from the right. All right. Here is a left-sided atrioventricular valve. This valve appears to have two leaflets, and there's no direct connections to the ventricular septum here, consistent with a morphologic mitral valve. So here is the anterior, valve, anterior leaflet, and here is the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve. When we take a look at this ventricle, it has fine crisscross trabeculations consistent with the morphologic left ventricle. And then here is a second arterial valve, which has three leaflets, one, two, three. 
And in this heart, you can nicely see that the arterial valves aren't actually circular in their annulus. The annulus here is actually truly this crown-shaped appearance here. As the fibrous leaflets have interposed myocardial interleaflet triangles. So really the annulus that we consider round or oval for the arterial valves are actually just a man-made construct, although clinically helpful. But the true annulus is really this crown-shaped. And you can see that there is continuity, there's fibrous continuity between the mitral valve and the aortic valve here as well. Then here is the ascending aorta, which then courses into the transverse arch and then the descending aorta. And then here is the patent arterial duct. And it should be probe patent as this heart would have been ductal dependent. So a heart with pulmonary atresia and intact ventricular septum with a small tricuspid valve and a severely hypoplastic right ventricle.